from Taiwan. If you caught our last video, we just spent a few days kind of near Hualien. Now we've taken the train a little bit south here to Taidong. We arrived this evening and we came straight to the night market because it only runs Thursday through Saturday and today is Saturday. So we're gonna grab some dinner, then we're gonna wake up tomorrow and show you everything you can do around Taidong in about 24 hours. This is really fun to see in a smaller town's night market. It is way more chill. I'm really enjoying it. Beautiful weather. It's a great night. Yeah. Yeah. What's the best food here? Uh, 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 it's so depressing that I can't ask what food should we eat. I just got this bowel because there was a line. It's got pork, lean pork, it's got an egg in it, it's got peanut powder, it's got powdered sugar, pickled mustards in it, coriander. It's really hot. Mm. It's really tasty. It's, it's kind of weird with the um, with the sugar in it, but it's nice. I could not resist a dark pancake roll. Can't wait. He picked this, but I'm gonna try it. I need another bite to get to the, the good stuff. Well, that's delicious. Yeah. Oh man, we've only been here five minutes. <laughs> Got a parking ticket. All right, luckily the parking attendant was just here on his moped and I asked him like, I got a parking ticket, what do I do? How much is it? And he said, no problem, no problem. He said it's only $10 and you can pay at a 7-Eleven or a family mart. Taiwan dollars. Taiwan dollars, like sorry. Cents. I mean, it's great. So, but like, every, I noticed that everyone has a ticket. So they obviously just must come around at a certain time because it's all like timestamps. Good morning. Come to pay my ticket. around Taidong area. So our first stop today is we came to Guanshan, which is about an hour away, uh, because I read about some famous stinky tofu. Cheers. It's not stinky. It's not that bad, is it? Is it? It's you that stinks, not the tofu. Ah. Evidently the story of stinky tofu is it originated in China in the Qing Dynasty, but now it's more commonly associated with Taiwan. But this dude had a tofu shop and his tofu wasn't selling, he wasn't successful. And so he found himself left with a bunch of old tofu, so to save it, he fermented it, and that's why it's stinky. It's not even that stinky, it's just fermented. Mm. Mm. This is really good. Try it with some of this stuff. Just like... La Jiao. La Jiao? Yeah, probably, right? A little bit of that on it. I don't know why this is like really such good. a scary thing for foreigners. It doesn't okay. smell that bad, and it's fresh. Me again. It's another playground. And it's me going down a slide. This one is shaped like a dolphin, I think. Here we go. Whoa.
buy. We'll buy. Right. Which car? Don't call you. All of them are 500. You going on my lap? Next stop is Brown Boulevard. We'll tell you about it in a little bit. We didn't really know what to expect, but as soon as you get near it, there's all these people trying to get you to rent little bicycles or electric cars, and they're flagging you over, and you're bargaining, and this lady was on it. So I think we're going to spend too much money on one of these ridiculous electric cars to go check out Brown Boulevard. is named after the coffee shop, Brown's Coffee Shop, but became famous when an EVA Airlines commercial featuring a famous Japanese actor filmed here. I don't know. It's in the rice paddies and it's beautiful and also a little bit ridiculous. You can rent a bigger vehicle than this one, but we, you know, wanted to lean into the bit. Also, I'm totally ashamed to admit that we paid $15 for this. 500 Taiwanese dollars. Who's driving this car? Me! Whoa! <laughs> Keep it in the middle. Back over this way a little bit. Turn the handlebars. Oh my gosh, he's going for a focus. Do you have control? I know which way. So in addition to that random road we were just at, this town, Chishang, uh, is famous for rice. Because of the altitude and the climate here, they grow really great rice. Uh, and it also was a tribute to a Japanese emperor when, this, when Taiwan was under Japanese rule. The other thing that Taiwan is famous for, like Japan, is bento boxes, specifically on the railways. I understand that major train stations prepare bento boxes that then get distributed to smaller train stations and then you can order them when you purchase your train ticket and have them on the train. We did that on the train that we didn't film when we came um, from Funling down here. And apparently if you're Taiwanese, you sometimes have like an allegiance to a certain major train stations. Bento box. All that to say, we've come to a little rice slash bento box museum here in the town center. Like bamboo husk and I guess they just used to wrap it like that. Then they moved on to making the actual little bento boxes out of, I guess, bamboo. Um, now they're like cardboard. Should we go pick out our bentos? Let's do it. Also, after I've had mine, can I just have one of these power naps? This is the last one. I enjoyed my bento on the train the other day. This is a great experience. After you learn about the rice, you can go downstairs and they have a little bento shop and a little rice shop and you can grab your bentos. And then they have an old train car and then train seating outdoors for you to enjoy your lunch. I know we love a train experience. This is what all is this about. Just eating an egg on a train. This is what it's all about? <laughs> I don't want to bore you with too many details, but I do find it fascinating that this is convenience food for this culture because it's so filling and healthy. We have pork cutlet on here, there's tofu, there's big pieces of ginger, there's pickled like mustard greens maybe, there's a fish cake type thing, cabbage, egg, mackerel. I love this kind of stuff. Ticket spice, coffee ticket spice. Ticket spice. So you don't have a ticket. We need to go for train that place. So you don't have a ticket. Where's your ticket? Where's your ticket? <laughs> That's an egg, sir. I don't, you need a ticket, please. Hi, it's me from the future. I'm in Kaohsiung. We'll have a video on that later. But I wanted to mention that um, the only reason we knew about this museum was because one of our followers on Instagram, I know her as Mr. Squiggles, sent us an article from Eater about the significance of Bento in Taiwan, and it mentioned this museum. And I have a personal pet peeve when people don't credit their sources or where things were recommended, particularly on YouTube. And I wanted to remedy that because I forgot to say it in the moment. So thank you. And if anybody else has recommendations, DM on Instagram is the best way to go, but we're always looking at the YouTube comments as well. This is my favorite fish in the whole entire world is mackerel. <laughs> Miss my mouth.
We're um, driving to our next stop, but we drove by whatever this is. A bunch of like straw animals on the side of the road. Obviously we had to stop. Can't tell you anything else about it. I think, I think it is, this is a wild guess. It's like a wholesale, maybe this is like a farm or a wholesale distribution of like, there was like massive bags of rice. Loads of people were buying stuff inside. So maybe this is just like a ruse to just get people to come in and buy stuff. But it worked. Well, I'm not gonna buy any rice, but we stopped. Does it look like me? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Z, you ready? With you, I can be sad with you. Just take my hand and fly. the first time we've truly been on the coast of Taiwan, right? Doesn't this reminds you a lot of Jeju Island. The rock looks really simple. Hey, so have you been counting the number of arches? I swear we've already done eight. We're not even halfway. It's quite a long bridge, this. We just walked across this bridge, San Chian Tai Bridge, to this little island over there. I'm not sure the significance of the island. The bridge looks like a dragon. The island was important during Japanese colonial time, but also there's a myth that I'm not equipped to tell you. It's beautiful, and now we're throwing rocks down at the beach. I think this is like two hours from Haidong City itself, but it was an hour from where we were at the uh, Bento Max Museum, and now we're like an hour away. So it's not two hours, I don't know. I would say it's worth coming to there. It's in Taidong County, right? If you're like going around doing like a bunch of other things, like, I would add this. Yeah, I really. or if you're driving from Hualien, yeah, well, yeah, then definitely just do it on your way down because you can follow the coast all the way. I want to stay with you. I want to stay with you. I'm going to be a little bit honest. Uh, there's more to do in Taidong than I expected and we did not plan accordingly. It's six o'clock now, we're driving home. We wanted to go to this Doolan Sugar Factory Cafe and Art Gallery, but I think it's mostly closed. The reviews sounded like it was even when it wasn't closing time. But yeah, it's six o'clock and we still had like three or four things we wanted to do. Did I say it was raining? It's also raining, so I think we're gonna go try to find some dinner and, and call it a 24 hours, but who knew? We wouldn't be able to When we had to get everything. it all in. I feel like we haven't told you anything about Tai Dong. Um, that area looked really cool. There's a bunch of little cute little bars we're driving by. Um, it's a big surfing place, apparently. It's also the least populated county in Taiwan, and also 30 to 35 percent of the population are indigenous. So one of the things we wanted to do today was there's like there's a number of tours and stuff. I think you can experiences you can book if you plan further in advance than us. We were gonna go to like a leisure farm, Bunan, I think, something like that. But. Uh, we Great. It's really cute. What a lovely little market. And it's a Sunday night as well. Nice. I like the aesthetic. Our intent was to go to the railway village, which is like a railway art village thing. I don't know, it's supposed to be good at sunset, but we, we missed that. Um, but they also have this little container park. And then this bonus market that we didn't know about. I wonder what population this town is, because it's real cute. It feels really new. It's cool. So they've like built it out of shipping containers, but then wrapped it with a, a roof. Very cool. So you don't quite notice that it's just all shipping containers. Because those have like become really popular around the world and sometimes they're a little ugly. This is a nice way to like mask it a little bit. I like it. Mommy. Yeah. I'm sorry I said I didn't want to go to the market. You what? What wait, what was that? I'm sorry I didn't want to go to the market. Oh, that was candid, but that's been our life all day. I don't want to go to X, and then we get to X. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't want to go here. This is really fun. Repeat, on repeat, like literally three times a day. We have been having lots of conversations about having an open mind. There's no lying on this channel. There's, there's things we omit. Um, but it's come to the end of 24 hours. 
uh, it's been a long day, and we're all feeling it. And there was a Moe's Burger, which I don't really even know what that is. I've never been to one. Across the street, and we wanted somewhere to sit down. And you know, here we are. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And we will see you in the next video tomorrow. We are driving our car from here in Taidong to Kunding, and we have no idea what to expect. And we hope you stay tuned for that one. We're done now, mommy. We're done now. Bye. Bye.